of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, John, first up, we have approval of minutes from our last meeting. Move as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Next up to review the previous calendar. Any comments, questions, or concerns? I do not. I don't either. Nor do I. Then we'll move on to our previous six line documents. Any questions? Move as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. And next up, we have the Silver Lake Dam correspondence. Uh, we have a letter here for our review. And we've all been CC'd on the correspondence between uh, the folks at the Silver Lake Association, DES, um, and all of their good offices. So we, um, I know that Pauline's been, cor not Pauline, she's been corresponding with Deborah and the commissioners. And we were hoping that you have, when is your meeting with? February 28th. Okay. We're hoping that you'll get some, some resolution by the 28th. Um, we hope you'll consider it reasonable that at this point, we feel that the issue has expanded beyond our authority and influence. Uh, so while we have pledged and set aside these funds, um, the commissioners feel, the county administration as well, feel it's prudent to set a deadline whereby, and you folks at Silver Lake would like to be informed too and know what's going on, whereby we all know this is gonna get done, jump start with the money commissioners and away we go and we'll have construction commence probably in the next few years or so. Or it's a non-starter. So commissioners, any comments or suggestions? Well, do you have a, a time and a, and a place for that meeting? Yes, I do. Am I, am I sure? Can answer? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's going to be February 28th. Mm -hmm. The location is 14 Mill Street in Belmont mm -hmm. on the fourth floor. That happens to be the Belmont Belmont Mill. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, you excuse me, Belmont or Belmont? Belmont. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, it starts at 6. Mm -hmm. You have to use the side entrance. I will send you, email you tomorrow, a um, flyer. Okay. There's one little mistake on it, so I can't give it to you today. Okay. Right. <laughs> um, so Mark Sanborn from DES is going to be running the meeting. Mm -hmm. He's the assistant commissioner. Mm -hmm. um, and he'll have leadership from the water division and the dam bureau. Um, I've invited both congressmen. Um, both senators, all of the Silver Lake Association people, Good. the reporter from the Laconia Daily Sun. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be inviting you guys. Thank you. Great. <laughs> this is the invitation. I plan on attending. The full delegation, FOMAP delegation, I'm going to send. Hopefully, some of them will them. attend. Senator Lane, town representatives from Belmont, Tilton, Northfield, and Franklin. Very good. Okay. So that would entail everyone that might have yep. something to do with it. So um, hopefully we'll have a good turnout and we'll hear straight from sure. the yes, what's going yeah. on. Pauline, you're doing everything that can possibly be done as, as we have to try and achieve the goal we've been discussing for the last year and a half to two years. Right. Have you heard yet from uh, Congressman Pappas? You did have yes. a discussion with him? He, he will not be able to attend, but he's sending Patrick Carroll to the meeting. Okay, good. Um, I have not heard back from Congressman Custer. Mm -hmm. The other two senators are looking at their schedule to see if they have availability. They It'd be great if we could get one or both of them. Yeah, to the or at least a representative from their right. office if they don't show. So that's where we kind of stand at the moment. Okay, do you have any questions as far as to where our position is on this? Um, no, I think you were going to do a letter. Deborah said you're going to be doing a letter um, kind of saying that the deadline will be June. Yes, um, June 30th. You have a decision on the funds. Um, so I guess that's pretty much it. I hope 
to get something settled at this meeting. I, I know we can't always expect that our federal representatives can attend each and every meeting like this. I just want to make sure that with respect to the four representatives we have in Congress and the Senate, you at least get a response from all four. You heard from yes. Congressman Pappas. Uh, have you heard from Senator Sheen's office yet? They're looking into her schedule. To as, as long as everyone's responding, that's yeah, fine. They if are. For some reason, you were not to get a response, then I would do a follow-up. The only person I haven't had a response from is um, Congresswoman Custer. Okay. But um, I think Pappas's office was contacting her as okay. well, so maybe that's why they didn't respond to me. Okay, let, let Deborah know on our behalf, just in case there was a miscommunication. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, we want to make sure at least they heard the invite. Commissioner Hodges? I'm good. Do we need to agree on the, this letter? Yes. Okay, I agree. I agree. As do I. Well done. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Polly, thank you. And okay. let us know if anything changes. I. I will be attending. Um, the commissioners, I believe, are going to check their schedules. Commissioners Hodges are wearing, and if they are able, I know that they would like to attend as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Very good. So I'll send this out tomorrow. Please. Please, Paul. And I'll Thank send you. you the letter tomorrow. Thank you. And again, always nice seeing you. You're always welcome here with us. Yes. Thank you. What's going on? <laughs> Not just with us, with all of your partners. Okay, commissioners, uh, next up, I believe Director Shelly Richardson is here with the nursing home update. Shelly, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Good evening. So the nursing home summary report that I'm presenting to you, it covers the time period between October 1st and January 31st. Um, we had a new hire in social services, Rose Darst. Today was her first day. She started as the social service director. Um, the table is there to show you what we've had for admissions or readmissions and um, discharges, the occupancy for, for the month. We had the Medicaid rate go up January 1st to $236.04 uh, from $229. Um, at this time, the nursing home has about 91 employees. Um, that are full-time, part-time, and registry. We have nine agency staff, which are travelers. Glendale, which is our dietary department, has about 15 um, members, and Health Pro Heritage that provides speech therapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy has five. Facility-wide, we have 19 open positions for full-time or part-time. We hired, and actually, I'm, I'm glad this was, I thought this was backwards, but in 2022, we hired um, 46 people, and we lost 44, so we gained two. Um, however, we started this year off with hiring five, and we have lost three. So we're still staying in that um, Workforce, workforce shortage. Mm -hmm. I provided the education that we've done that was mandatory for um, the beginning of the year. And we also had some offsite education that we were involved in. We did participate in a tabletop drill with Taylor Home, um, also the hospital, the BNAs, um, St. Francis, Golden View, um, the Tilton Veterans Home, um, the Hazmat team. Uh, it was amazing. There was 80 of us there. So we did a tabletop drill, which is one of the requirements of the facility for long-term care. Um, it was actually uh, a toxic gas had been um, let loose in one of the facilities. And then we also had um, a drama play out with somebody that lost um, a family member and they were like an active shooter or intruder in a building. So we worked that all out. We're going to have a live drill probably sometime in September or October with the same amount of people. Um, COVID-19 is still going on for the nursing home. We still are masked. Um, we did have an outbreak uh, in January. There was about 15 residents one time or another that came down with COVID. We had 10 staff members that also came down with it. Um, we have been cleared from outbreak as of January 25th, and we've been testing twice a week still. Everybody's been negative. 
Um, still doing weekly red letters to all the family and everybody. And every time we have a positive case, we have to notify them by 5 p.m. the next day. So um, as I mentioned, I was on a call today because we're supposed to be transitioning. They're supposed to come up with a roadmap for long-term care and how to transition out of um, COVID and get to treat it like a cold or the flu or something like that. However, it was more public entities and not long-term care. Long-term care is gonna have their own stakeholder call, which I'm gonna monitor for because we still have a lot more requirements. Um, the COVID vaccination, as far as the residents, we're at 100% of everybody getting their primary series. We're at 94% with them getting boosted. We have three people that are either not due or have declined. Staff, um, we're at 84% of everybody getting the primary um, boost and the booster, 35%. The booster is a little bit higher. People are not as willing and compliant to do it. Um, we have some ongoing projects as far as um, the site outside the bricks. I think they're looking at doing that sometime in the spring, maybe. Mm -hmm. I was trying to touch base with John about that. I know he was talking about another um, RFP. The skylights right now and the work that is being done in the activity room, the dining room, the main hallway is probably about 90% done. We've had some um, trouble with the weather because it's either been too cold or icy or they've also had workforce shortages where they have not had painters or drywallers or that um, type of thing show up. They've been great about testing as far as coming into the facility. Um, the last area is gonna be kind of tricky. It's West Wing in the day room, which is utilized a lot for meals and for activities, but we're gonna have to, um, I want to say have the contractors come through the main hallway, go out probably the courtyard doors, and we'll plastic off inside so that they'll just be not walking through the facility and try to mitigate as much as possible the interaction with residents. Um, the meal service area, we've done the carts now, and we've got them. The only issue we had was the new induction feeding unit apparently was catching on fire. So not here, but out, and they have um, recalled it. So they took ours back, they're working on it. The heating element has an issue with it um, and we'll be getting that back. So we're, we're still borrowing Rockingham counties. Um, it seems to be going well though, as far as delivering the meals that way and the dining room naturally is back open. Um, I did put down who, uh, for staff has been recognized as um, providing exemplary care and, and work ethic activities. We had finally the hairdresser that we hired um, and then some of the activities that we did throughout the time frame. Housekeeping, we hired another part-time person. Um, Melissa Weeks has come to us with uh, some experience and she is taking a 32-hour position. However, I, she did talk to me about she'd like to go full-time. And I said, oh, we just had this conversation in, in our budget meeting um, because they were looking at taking away a part-time position because we've had a long time where people have not filled them mm -hmm. and somebody would be more apt to want a full-time position. So I, I don't know how that's going to go. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe we also hired an, a gentleman, Jeffrey Green, and he's been working out well. So there's no openings there. Inmate meals, um, I have the amount that we've served uh, corrections and also the poundage. There's no vacancies in laundry. Nursing. So we this was the list of people that we hired nursing. A few people have already left. Um, or they were no call, no show um, when they were due to come in and start their orientation. As of January 30th, I have listed the positions that are open. Um, and as I said previously, we had nine uh, travel staff. The extra weekend incentive, we paid $150 to anybody if it was there. 
uh, an extra weekend shift for them to work. If they were working seven to three and then they worked 311 or they picked up an opposite weekend that they are working, we spent um, 28,000 there. As far as mandating, we only had to mandate three times between October and January for a total of $150. Everybody, once again, has stepped up and you know volunteered or switched or done whatever they can to help out. Um, we had four licensed LNAs who actually took the medication nurse assistant program, which cost us $8,000, but that, that is great career growth because they can take the position of giving medica medication. It takes that uh, job off of the nurse, that task. Um, we're waiting. Hopefully, we'll start another program in April. We've got five people that were interested, but they only do four at a time. So we'll we'll rummage through that. Um, we had one um, of the LNAs go to the LPN program with River Valley and she graduated. She's waiting to take her boards. We just have a little bit of trouble trying to get the licensing board to jump through hoops to get all the paperwork done and accreditation. We also um, had adopted the new education stipend at the January 23rd meeting for um, staff to get, if they, anybody filled out an application within the last two years, that we would help. I think it's $192 a week towards their tuition um, or their, maybe it's not a tuition, um, their education, education reimbursement. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I, we have one um, eligible uh, LNA when she takes her boards and passes, she would be eligible for that program. A busy report. And that's sorry, I know it's a lot. No, it's no, no, good. Good. no. Actually, just have a couple of quick questions for you. Um, uh, the new bivalent booster that you that you were distributing would that represent the recipient's third or fourth COVID related shots? It could, it's their fourth, and it's some people, fourth. it's their sixth. Because some people, if they were compromised, immunocompromised, they had to get one in between and then another one in between the second booster. Okay. And for those who accepted the new booster, would there be a scheduled additional booster four to six months from now that you know, or is that not determined yet? Not determined yet. Okay. And I also had a question on the defective heating equipment for the kitchen. You said that you had the unit on loan from, is it Hillsborough? They were yes. kind enough to lend it to us. Yes. When did the company tell you you would have your own equipment back in serviceable and safe to operate? They told us the end of February. Okay. Um, only right now, weeks. they're replacing all the people that have one that uh, they're getting like first dibs on it. And we hadn't gotten one yet. So, I mean, we haven't been up and using it. That's right around the corner, so that's perfect. Yeah, it should be very soon. And and Rockingham has been great about letting us keep theirs. Good, good. Commissioner Waring. Seeing any positive movement in recruitment? Anything? Any glimmer, small glimmer? <laughs> small glimmer, small glimmer. I go to, I go to everything I can. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm I, pretty active yeah. out there with everything. I just w was up at the college talking with them. Um, I, I'm hoping that with this um, tuition assistance, yeah. That may be because that was one of the things that the students had asked. Yeah. Because I know a lot of the hospitals have some type of. Right. So, um, but it's also early because they're still in school till May. So, and and they're kind of doing their last rotations to see where they want to go, what they want to do. So it's kind of early mm -hmm. still, but um, we have <clears throat> had some movement come from other facilities. But it doesn't. It doesn't stay. No. We, it doesn't retain. Right. You know, they're just price shopping. And a lot of times they'll come um, and they'll be able to go back to where they're working, and they'll offer them more money to stay. So then we never see them again. Right. They just use you for leverage. Yeah, pretty much. That was actually going to be my question, but but going to ask, where coming out of school? Do these LNAs come from? Is it 
the Botech here or in Concord or um, LNAs, LNAs or nurses? Both. Uh, so LNAs go to the Hewitt Center, and a lot of times they end up going from high school to college. Plymouth State uh, University, we have them, we have Plymouth High School, so we try to get them in to, so that they see it. LNA Health Careers, who has an office in Manchester and Meredith, River Valley Community College that has the LPN program, um, Lakes Region Community College, but even their, their enrollment is down. They haven't got enough people to sustain a class. Yeah. So it is. I was just thinking, is there, can, are you getting able to get to these um, graduating classes, our new program? Uh, I was worried, I asked Jamie if we could work on an ad, All right. trying to figure out how to do it. Because when we send an ad to the college system, it goes to all the community colleges, it goes to UNH, SNU, and Plymouth. Right. And it goes on their um, board, There's their board for, for um, the college website. Okay. So is there anything you'd like to bring to our attention? Something we could be doing to help you more than we have? Or oh my gosh, I could have a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I think we're we're holding our own. We're at 58. My goal, I'd like to get, like we talked about it before, 70% full, which means we'd be 65 to 66 patients. Mm -hmm. That means we would be able to get another seven or eight patients. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's hard because we have people that are on a contract. They're only here 12 or 13 weeks. You get somebody that has COVID, they're up for 10 days. I mean, I had 10 staff members out for 10 days. That's a lot of workforce gone. That's still a guideline that you're required to follow. 10 days. We, this, the first time in three years, we brought back people early. We tested them and we brought them back at five days, as long as they had no fever, no symptoms, and they tested right. negative. Right. Which is a standard for everybody else. Yeah, five but, days. but hadn't been for us. Yeah. So still Only there. when so we're um, critical crisis staffing can we do that. And we did. Hopefully in May, that for March was it March or May? May, May 11th. Hopefully by then, it'll be nice. Will that have any negative impacts on us? Mm -hmm. When when that goes through, will that have any negative impacts? The only negative is if they continue to keep everything because people are tired of it. Right. You know, you go out in the real in the real world. I say, um, and you're not wearing a mask. Right. You know, you're not testing. Mm -hmm. um, we're still have held to testing twice a week with the numbers. We're still wearing masks and 95s. We end up having to put goggles on if we have an outbreak or we have somebody with it. So people are getting tired of that mm -hmm. because why are we doing it and not, you know, so they might look at assisted living isn't under the same guidelines as us. So they might look for a job there mm -hmm. and say, this right. is it. At three years, I've had enough, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. So that would be the negative impact. Yeah. And some money, we're probably going we'll to lose some money starting next year after the- that, um, Yeah, our stipend, the $100 stipend will be gone, right? Um, no, I'm talking about that enhanced FMAP money. That oh, we get. that also, yeah. If that will go away, but not until 2024. So we'll get three more payments on that, but mm -hmm. it will be well worth it to get, yeah. to relax the rules. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sean. You're welcome. Um, thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, commissioners, next up we have um, a request to approve uh, the unit collective bargaining from the sheriff's department. Yes. And bring us up to speed on that, please, Deborah. Okay, we have been working really for quite a long time on this contract, and I would say. <clears throat> It was um, virtually entirely completed when uh, Commissioner Taylor was here. And it was sort of put on hold until the election. And now the election's gone by and we were, the next time we got together with the unit, we readily, actually we canceled the meeting because we agreed. We were already basically where we needed to be. Um, so there's, I think I attached, um, the cost items, and 
Do you have a copy of cost items? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I didn't keep a copy. I don't have a copy. Um, but I don't think there's any more than the wages, which is the same uh, agreement that you've seen before for all the other units. And uh, we increased their longevity by $20 a year on those few tiers. They're going to remain the same on health insurance, paying the 10% contribution. Um, and, and other than that, it was really just some grammatical errors. There weren't any significant changes in this document from the prior one. Commissioner Hodges? Not having been involved in the development. But it hasn't been involved in the past. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think the colas look very reasonable, and, and I'm sure you both put a lot of work and time and thought of this. Yeah, Commissioner Taylor was really the point man on the negotiations. He, I thought he did quite well for us. And we appreciated his efforts. I will move the acceptance of this presented. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Thank you. All right. So now we will need to uh, request that the full delegation approve the cost items. Mm -hmm. That will be the next step. Um, so I guess just to, do I have your permission to request that the delegation yes. schedule a meeting for that? You okay. did. Never mind. Yeah. Thank you. And I assume okay. that right. the uh, unit has ratified. They're going to vote. I don't know. Do you happen to know this, Jim? I don't know. Whether yeah, I, it's probably in the works. I think it's probably happening. It may, I don't even know if it has or not. To All right. Truth. But now you've done your part. Yes. <laughs> we'll wait here for you. Sure. Yeah, we can't have the delegation meeting until they do. So right. I'll find out tomorrow. Okay. Very good. Oh, Deborah, uh, opioid settlement business. Okay, this is more um, this is a settlement with Teva, Allerg Allergen, CVS, Walgreens, Walmart. Um, and this is giving, if you agree to, uh, if you authorize me to sign this, this will give us Belknap County permission to join with the Attorney General's um, settlement and share in what he's getting for the state, basically. Um, as you know, Commissioner, I would serve on the Opioid Bay Commission. We meet about once a month or so. Um, it's an amalgamation of, of people from all across New Hampshire. There are some legislators. I was appointed by the governor. Uh, you have some uh, members from H HHS who participated in our commissioners as well. I, it, it's been a pleasant surprise to me that not just those who represent the county are looking for a fair distribution downshifted to the counties and municipalities. Um, the total, this program, I don't know how long, the, the commissioners will come and go as their terms expire, depending on their capacity. But the, the Attorney General explained it to me, or the Deputy Attorney General, James Pepetti, that this is an 18-year process. You know, we're two years into an 18-year process for total disbursement. But the total monies collected, uh, Deborah, I think you can confirm, are going to, could approach $300 million by the time we get to the end of the 18-year mark. So, um, you know, our concern and our priorities to make sure that the counties get certainly Bella County gets as much of these monies as possible. Uh, Deborah, any any additional thoughts? On this? It was recommended to me by the the uh, deputy attorney general to sign off on this. Like Our attorney, the board's attorney um, from Napoli, Schlonick, um also recommended that you enter into this agreement. Yeah. You need a motion. Yes. Yes. To authorize it would be to authorize the county administrator to sign. Um, because it's all done through DocuSign, you know, uh, electronically. So I don't have it here for you tonight to sign. I would make that motion. Sorry, all in favor? Aye. Aye, the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up we have a partial financial update. Um, is Lori going to present to us tonight or are you? Yes. Can you move the clock? 
Oh, oh, right, because it's been in our stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No. Uh, no. Um, so, yes, um, partial coming to you, and you have to bear with me. I did not bring the glass, I don't need yours. Um, but so we're coming to you tonight for a recommendation for nursing home receivable write off. Um, after review, the nursing home billing coordinator, the nursing home account clerk, the nursing home administrator, and the county administrator, and myself. We're recommending to write off $46,369.43 of outstanding receivable. And this amount represents resident accounts that are now they're deemed as uncollectible. And um, there's a lot of reasons for that, but in, in a lot of the reasons it's because they have been um, expired. So currently there is 44477 already allocated in the allowance for doubtful account. So that amount of the write-off will not affect the fund balance in 2022. Um, the difference of the request is $1,892. Uh, so we're asking to write off $1,892 more than what is currently in the allowance for doubtful account. Um, so that amount would impact the fund balance in 2022. Um, I believe you have a detail of what we're requesting in 2020, we're requesting, and um, again, I can give you a good details there, but we're requesting $26,166 and a two um, from 2020's outstanding balance. And in 2021, for that outstanding balance, we are requesting to write off $20,203.42 for the combined $46,369. And 43 cents. And that would be, I think, for your approval. Commissioner Waring. I'll move the acceptance of the recommendation right off $46,369.43 of uncollectible pension home receivables. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Good job, Shelly. <laughs> We're looking at a request to waive competitive bidding for radios belong to the correction department. The superintendent's here. Adam, good evening. How are you? Yeah, good evening. Good to see you. What are you doing for us? Uh, so just a little background on when we ordered our new cruisers last year. Uh, we had it budgeted into the ARPA funds for a complete outfit, including the radios of those vehicles. Um, because at the time, uh, it appeared that the uh, the larger Motorola radio project for the county, that those radios were going to get funded out of that project uh, due to a little horse trading on Motorola's mm -hmm. behalf uh, over frequencies. Um, and so we held off in putting the uh, radios into the vehicle, thinking they were coming in on that project. Uh, there was some miscommunications with two-way and the project, and essentially those or those radios did not get ordered in that project. Uh, we did return the money that was earmarked um, in those vehicle, uh, that ARPA vehicle uh, expenditure, uh, but now we need radios. <laughs> so <clears throat> I've reached out to both vendors that we have uh, both used and are the only two uh, vendors locally for uh, the Motorola products, one is Ossipede Mountain Electronics. Uh, their bid for two new radios installed is $11,204.12. And then uh, two-way, um, I think this, yeah, it is technically two-way, uh, is 9,816.14 for the exact same uh, radios. Um, this is, uh, these are apples to apples comparison. So what I'm asking the commissioners tonight is uh, to one, waive the purchasing uh, policy as these are the only two vendors um, available. We have used both of them, and my recommendation then would be to award it to two way at being a substantially lower price. So, this is a fixed price, Adam. That's correct. And there is no wiggle room here for negotiation. Uh, the, the reason there, the, honestly, the reason the two-way uh, price is so much lower is because uh, of their snafu. So they've actually comped us a whole bunch of um, installation, and that's why their price is lower than Ospion. 
But there's your wiggle room. Same product, same service. Exact same product, exact same service. And no change in any warranty. And that's included installation, Adam? Correct. Yeah, and this is for two radios, one for each of the new cruisers. Michelle, where? It seems reasonable to accept the recommendation and purchase these radios from directly to Motorola for $9,860.40. Yeah, I'll second. I dealt with two way for many, 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 many years and always very satisfied with them. Deborah, uh, Commissioner Waring's motion also covers the waiving of the purchasing order. Right. Yeah, and motion motion. Required. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Adam, thank you. Thank you. And I don't know if there's something that we need to do in terms of where that gets paid from. No. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, it'll be that Fund 18 account through the ARPA, just like the cruisers where we okay. got those. We have other business. Commissioners, anyone have any other business? I don't. Uh, the only other that I have is uh, I did uh, review the employee survey results that you passed along to us and that did remind me that about the Primex uh, department review for the Sheriff's Department that we talked about. I did see a couple of comments about that. I was wondering where we are with that. Uh, Primex declined to do it. They don't want to do that kind of work and they're not going to do it. Okay. Um, they, they did give me a reason, but they basically felt that it was out of their scope to do that sort of thing. They did it before. Right, similar to when they met with the board commissioners and the goal setting goal session. Setting sessions and right, which is the same thing. We're not we're not working for them to go in and audit the department. We're looking for them to go in and assist the department to work through any morale issues or goal setting for the department. That, that was what my understanding was of what we were, were looking and asking for them to do. I'll have to look. I, I guess can I just can I just send you more information? I can send you what Primex sent me for a response. And if I did not, I don't think the question I asked them was if they would do a goal setting session. And I think we'd have to talk with the sheriff about how to have a goal setting session if he's uh, interested in that or not. Okay. You know, I think. Well, I mean, I think the same problems that we, that we, saw and recognized back in the fall are still there and we at least me as one commissioner feel we need to do something to assist our employees in that department and, and evaluate the department and make it a, a a better place to work if it if it needs to be and i don't know if that's the case or not but there's there were several employees that did make comment that things should be addressed or at least looked at. And I think that we need to find a way to do that. Yeah, the only thing I will tell you that the um, the request from an employee to uh, about Primax specifically um, was, you know, I didn't just ignore that person. So I did answer back that and let them know that Primax was not inclined to do um, to come in and do some sort of review of the department. Mm -hmm. But that if there is any, they have absolute access that we, if there is anything that mm -hmm. they want to talk about or certainly any complaint, they have the union steward, their direct Teamsters representatives, um, myself, Jamie, basically any manager or commissioner in this county, if there is any complaint of any wrongdoing, mm -hmm to please come forward. Um, there has been none. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, you know, I just got, thank you very much. So I'm, okay. there has been no complaint still that I'm aware of. Yes, sir. On, on your question of Primex, it's my understanding that they do online training and they do offer trainings that we can offer to personnel uh, 
whether it's uh, leadership training, emerging leaders, they have a number of programs that I'm familiar with right. from my prior experience, and those are available. I think their problem with doing the sheriff's department is a political entity. So even if they offer a suggestion, you have an elected official that's running a department. So that that's kind of where the conflict is with them. But the right. training exists, and and one of my goals is to try to facilitate people's interest in getting that training. But it is right. You just apply and, and you go. Yeah, yeah, that's my understanding as well. And these leadership or uh, team building motivational uh sessions those are available we can certainly look at what's what's available that we can bring in um, those are those are similar to what i believe you're talking about kind right. of goal setting um you know leadership uh principles um we we certainly do have some some new leadership positions that will be built and those leaders will be going to different leadership schools as well so some of this is kind of happening through attrition as well as you know um you know the new leadership coming in yeah, they basically, I just pulled up the uh, response that I got, and they did certainly mention that they'd be happy to um, meet with the sheriff regarding training for command staff and anything in the areas of risk management, personnel management, HR, um, any of those kind of areas that might be helpful. Okay. So they're kind of pushing it to training, and they're happy to do that. Okay. Whatever we can can do to make that happen, I, I definitely would like to see us because that was news to me. I didn't know that they had declined. I know our, I, I remember we had asked and talked about it. And last I think I recall was we discussed a week until after the election or something, and then kind of fell off my radar until I read that the survey results and then that reminded me that not being part of this when it when it developed. Um, is there anybody else that could be asked to do this? I think it depends what you want to be done. Um, if if it's going to be training, organizational alignment, culture development, um, Primex is and, and Primex will do it, and I think at no cost. So there, mm -hmm. that's probably our best option. Um, if you want some sort of assessment of how the department is being run. That's something we have to pay for, and I'm, you know, I think there's some organizations we could that generally doesn't go over very well, but um, I think of the, well, yeah. And for me personally, it was not the latter. It was certainly the, the first piece that right. was just organizational behavior and culture and and alignment and a check in and to help the organization move better and more efficiently you know i am in no way of saying we we need to go in there and assess the sheriff's problem that's not my objective at all you know i, I certainly appreciated deborah's distribution of the survey um we received almost full participation in the response uh some of the feedback was positive towards the county administrator, the board of commissioners, other than not so much, but I've never considered constructive criticism to be a negative thing. And I would certainly consider more input from the employees at the county as we go forward. Um, Commissioner Hodges, uh, any additional thoughts on how to get perhaps closer to Commissioner Waring's desire to get a, a closer examination of the inner workings of the department? I have to think about that. I mean, it sounds to me like Primex, if, if this is the goal, is to develop goal sharing and leadership and, and that sort of thing. Maybe Primex is other people to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we need to you know talk to them again and say we don't really don't want a, a critical evaluation of the leadership. We just want to kind of make things better over there. Commissioner Hodges, would you recommend the follow-up letter yes, sent to Primex request yeah, for clarification? All right. Uh, just because Primex is very clear already, they offer all sorts of training and they are willing to offer any training. So I would think that we need, I just made a note to talk to the sheriff um, about what kind of training he might be interested in okay. because we can't um, put training in the department. <laughs> 
But if they are looking for any training, we have a great opportunity in where to get it. So perhaps commissioners, we should solicit additional feedback from the chair. I think you have to kind of handle on the next steps and we'll see where we go from there. I think that's, you know, I, I can't foresee that there'd be a reluctance to want to have, have training. Um, and, and the deputy chief has, uh, has already said that he is, he's on that and that has that forefront on his agenda. So I think we just, uh, I would agree with that. Look for that to continue to move forward. Sounds good then. Okay. Uh, Deborah. Are we going into no? Okay. Uh, is there any any public comment? I don't think I was going to be open public yet. Any department comment? Seeing none. No, I just to follow up on your question. I think that the the flip side of people leaving, which is some of your concern and, and bringing people in, you become with training. So personally, I attended the chief development force that Primex has put on. So you, you actually are getting some of this training by hiring new people. We're bringing new people on that have uh, law degrees. I mean, there are, people, there are people coming in with some leadership training and perhaps, and I don't know all the training other people had, um, some of the training may not have been afforded to them or they didn't have it. Um, so there's a culture change happening and maybe some time will help with that. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly uh, I would look for that. This training is good training, um, but we need time to, to get there. Makes sense. All right, very good. Jeffrey, do we have anything else? No, I don't have anything. Then commissioners. A reminder about um, Wednesday, and Wednesday, Wednesday, yeah, yes. I have it on my okay. calendar. I'll, I'll be here. Commissioner Hodges, I believe, Monday at one o'clock as well. Uh, budget review committee. Even I'll be here. But we've been able to attend the last two hours later. Stephen's been to both of them. I made a lot by this department. And how are they going? Very well. I, I think it's been proceeding smoothly. Okay. It's been a push or a bus. Yes. Yeah. Productive. Yeah, it's been productive. Refreshing. Yes. They're Productive, making cuts, civil. reasonable, reasonable. reasonable cuts, yeah. and listening and talking, and it's it's been much more interactive. And sure. it's more of a, a partnership than confrontation. Maybe the way it's supposed to. Yes. Okay. I guess we can adjourn. Ever? You're out. Over and over. Oh, okay. Deborah, when's our next meeting? March. Reject the date. Um, okay. March 6th. So we agree on the meeting here next month. Okay. When is it March? Monday, March 6th. March 6th. Right. So the, the follow up meeting would be the. Only, it's only that's a holiday. So we're going to get that one. What's a holiday? President's only. Day. March 6th? Um, no, March 6th is fine. It's the 20th. What's March, the March 20th. March 20th. There's no President's Day. There's no holiday. Day. February. Sorry, I'm looking at February. February 20th. <laughs> right. Nice try. Yes. Uh, nice yeah. Try. Do we have a holiday tomorrow? <laughs> Seems like it. Ah, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, we don't even have St. Patrick's Day off. No. So it's Monday, March 20th. Those yes. are our two meetings yes. in March. Okay. And we decided to issue the additional meeting this month in February. Or we, yeah, because we split the middle. Right. There's oh. only one in February, which is right now. Yeah. Okay. Good. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you, everyone.